Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to implement the functionality of forgot password. So we have seen and developed our backend API of uh, this movie API and all the functionality has been working fine. We are able to log in, we are able to register and we are able to access resource according to the role of a user, right? So everything is currently working fine. What if you, the user forgets its password? Then how he can be able to change his password? Okay. So that is the functionality we are going to implement here. And we are going to see how uh, lots of concepts and lots of workflows that, has, uh, that is involved in it. Okay. So the workflow that we are going to see is through uh the e email verification and email verification will be done through otp okay so let's first understand the workflow of it okay so i hope uh my this is the escalate row where i have made this diagram so if you can see first you have this login page where you enter email and password so i'm uh, i I'm stating this with respect to the how a UI would look like and how things would interact with the server. So we are not implementing the UI, but we are taking care of the backend work. But we need to understand the the flow of uh, we need to understand the flow at the front end part so that we can develop the functionality at the back end. Okay. So first of all, this is a login form where you enter email and password and there is a login option. There is multiple options like uh, there can be a register option also in case a user is new to it. But for simplicity, we have kept a login and below is a forgot password option in case one does not remember the password. Now suppose the user don't know the password, so it clicks on forgot password. Then it is taken to this form where it has to enter the email so that the email verification is important. Okay, so it enters its email, submits it. In the email, he gets an OTP. Okay, one time password with a fixed uh, expiration time also. Okay, it has to enter his OTP and click on verify OTP. Once the verification is done, then a new form is uh, shown to him where he can enter his new password and re-enter the same password and submit it. Once he do that, his password gets changed and he's redirected to now again to the login page. So this is a very simple workflow of how things happen. And uh, if you have ever done forgot password in any of the website, this would be the case how you have done it, right? Now at backend, how things hand are going to handle. So first to send the email we need to set up our uh, gmtp server or the configuration for sending the email so first thing is that so we don't need to do much configuration because there is a spring boot starter dependency which provides this functionality to us so we will be putting that into our pom.xml file okay so that will take care of it and some small configuration is there in the application.yml file so what we are going to do is first we are going to send an email to the user on its email then for this otp so otp can be of various types so we will basically generate a six di six digit number as an otp and it will be sent to the user also because we need to verify whether the OTP which user has uh, put it here and uh, what actually the OTP is for that particular email, both should be same. So we will have one repository which we will create so that we can verify it. Okay. And we also need to verify that the user has entered the OTP before the OTP gets expired. So we have to check these both things at the backend. Okay. And after that, once the OTP is verified in the next uh, screen, you can see 
we when the user enters new password and uh, again and re-enters the same password and submits it at the back end we have to first check that both password and new password are same and second that we have to uh, run a update query now when you run an update query so there are some extra things that you need to take care of it which we will see it when we will uh, develop a method for it okay so i hope you have understood the workflow so now let's get into let's code all these things in the back end okay so first thing is to install the dependency so here okay i'll do it here or maybe here um okay below this web dependency i will do so dependency the name of the dependency is spring boot starter mail okay and it comes from uh, this org dot spring framework dot boot so just copy paste it here so this is the only dependency we which we need for this forgot password functionality here we are also going to do reset password as you can see from the title of the video but that will be an assignment and it will be easier to do once you understand this one okay so let's first implement this one okay so our maven dependency is installed right now let's close it let's come to application.yml now here you have to set up certain so here you have to configure a few things which is related to mail so there is something known as mail uh, it is spring dot mail dot host so since we are using a gmail server so we will say smpp dot gmail dot com okay port is defined as 587 these are some of the standard configuration okay now you have to put a username now username will be put in a string which will be a email through which you have to send the mail to the user who wants to request the who, who do you want to send the otp okay so you you can uh, here you have to write your valid gmail id okay i am not writing currently but when i will complete the application i will write it because i don't want to show this uh, email and similarly the password okay so these two things you have to write for the gmail but here in the password you don't have to write your actual gmail password what you can do is here is my one of the gmail account and in that you will see that in the when you go to manage your google account here you will see in security first there is there will be an option of two step verification for me it's showing a green tick so if it is not showing green tick for you first complete the two step verification and then once you go inside it once you go inside it you will see an option of f passwords okay so here you, you uh, here you can just go into the app password and you can set up your app password it is very easy you just have to write your own app password and the app name that's it app name you can give anything and app password also you can uh, app password will be generated for you okay so and that app password you have to provide it in here in the password field next is properties so in the properties you have to there is a properties of properties dot mail dot smtp or dot auth so which you have to make it true and then start tls and you have to enable it okay so auth is basically for the authorization purpose and the start tls you have to enable it so you have to set both to, to true right so this is the only configuration that we have to do to set up for our sending the mail right so let's close it for now here we have defined our various services right so here we will define another service and this time it will be an email service so we will define an email service and we will mark this as service okay now in this email service 
this class will be responsible for handling it will give us a template to send the mail so how we will do it so first we need a dependency of java mail sender so java mail sender and java mail sender we add a constructor injection so what this java mail sender does it this is a class which is responsible for actually sending the mail okay so that's why you need you need to inject its dependency and this class you get when you have uh, installed the dependency of spring boot starter mail second is public void send simple message there is a reason why this is named as sim send simple message because there is a class which we will be using and then you have to specify a mail body also into it so mail body is something that we will we will create ourselves so mail body will be a record basically so let's create a mail body or it will be a record this mail body we will create inside the dto okay in this we will be having a string to a string subject and string text okay so in the to field you will specify to whom we need to send the mail subject is the subject of the mail and text is the body area in the gmail that you have okay so this is all we need to specify that's why we have taken an we created a record which will have all this basically a template for it okay this is to be done now there is one class that we need to use simple mail message okay so using this class we have to draft our email and java mail sender takes an argument of type uh, takes an argument of the object of type um, simple mail message only so that's why we need to use this class now this has various functionality one is set to okay you can specify so i can say mail body to then message dot set from now from in the from you have to specify the email which you have which you have mentioned here your valid gmail id that you have mentioned here it should be specified in the from so i will specify it later message dot set subject here again mail body dot subject will take from and dot set text here mail body dot text okay so this is how we set up or draft our mail and then we will use java mail sender dot send and will write message that's it so this function will help us in sending the mail we just have to provide the basic details and that is to whom we need to send what is the subject of the mail and what is the text that we want to send we will we will see what we need to we will be writing over there okay so this much is done for us right now next thing is now we can start to work on our forgot password functionality now we will create one entity known as forgot password and the reason for that is because we need to store temporary time we need to store the otp and the ex expiration date or the expiration time of the o otp so that we can verify with the user okay so you will understand in a time if we are not able to get now so we will have forgot password okay and we will mark it as entity and we will have no args constructor all args constructor getter and builder what fields we will have so first field we will have is integer forgot password id second field we will have a uh, integer otp third field we will have is a date date from java util package and expiration time and we also need to map it to a user so that 
फॉर एवरी यूजर इट वुड बी डिफरेंट ओके सो वी विल मार्क इट एज वन टू वन राइट ऑल्सो लेट्स गो टू द यूजर एंड हेयर ऑल्सो लेट्स राइट प्राइवेट एंड फॉरगट पासवर्ड फॉरगट पासवर्ड एंड वन टू वन मैप्ड बाय यूजर दिस मच इज ओके नाउ लेट्स मेक दिस आई डी एज अ प्राइमरी की एंड जनरेटेड जनरेटेड वैल्यू एज ऑटोमेटिकली सो आई and we will make all this column as non nullable because we don't want any of the column to be null okay so column nullable equal to false that's it so we have constructed our forward password functionality where we will be storing an otp the expiration time and it will be associated to the that particular user who is uh, asking or who is requesting to change the password because he has forgotten the password right so this is this uh, thing we require and once the expiration time means once the otp is expired we will delete the record also okay so that is also a case that we have to take care of so since we have created an entity we need to create a repository so we will go here and we will create a forgot password repository okay and we will extend it with jpa repository forgot password and integer <clears throat> okay so we have create, created the re re repository also now we need a controller so forgot password controller which will help us in uh, which will have all the apis that we need to interact with when we are dealing with the forgot password functionality okay so at request mapping it will have slash forgot password as a base url first thing here will be that we need to send the mail because uh, once the user sends the mail or when the user submits his email we have to send a otp to his email because we need to verify the email right so first thing will be that only so we will say send mail for email verification so for that we will have a post mapping and we will name it as verify and also here we will take in path variable we will take an email and we will say public res Once entity of type string verify verify email and we will simply take path variable as string email. Once we get the email, we need to verify whether the user with the given email exists or not. So we need an user object also. So user equal to user equal to. Now we need a user repository for this. So we will inject. private final user repository and user repository constructor injection and we will say user repository dot we have already made a method for find by email so here we will pass email or else throw new username not found exception please provide valid email okay you can uh, write any message that you would like it to have okay now next is once the once we have got the hold of the user object now it's time to formulate the mail body because now we need to send mail so we will use mail body mail body equal to uh, mail body dot builder okay we need a builder for it so that it would be easier so let's go to this mail body where it is and let's make it builder okay a long box is very much useful 
for such purposes. So builder dot two. So two will be the email that the user has given. Text. Okay. For the text, we can just write uh, this is the OTP for your forgot password request and we have to provide an OTP right we will soon see how to give the OTP okay and then a subject the so subject will be OTP for forgot password request and then we will build it now we need to generate this OTP so we will have a private method private integer OTP generator it will uh, we will use a random class basically uh, random equal to new random and we will simply return a random dot next end six digit number we want to generate so this is the minimum and this is the maximum that we want to generate okay so it will generate a six digit number and randomly between this range okay and we will extract this otp here int otp equal to otp generator now since we are sending this mail with the otp we also need to uh, keep the otp we need to save this otp also because of and we have created this forgot password did entity because of that only right so let's create an object of this also also so forgot password this fp and we will use forgot password dot builder uh, dot otp so otp will be otp only dot expiration time for expiration time we will say new date uh, system dot current time in millisecond and we will add something like 70 milliseconds into it okay so basically one minute 70 seconds we are currently putting because we want to test it in this video also so but in general you can give the time of five minutes or ten minutes according to whatever you feel you want to give okay then we need to set up user so user will set up this user object and then finally build okay so first thing will be to send the mail so for sending the mail we need uh, we need an email service okay so let's get the email service also email service email service let's inject it here email service dot send simple message we need to pass mail body so here we have done so email will be sent using this then we need a forgot password repository okay okay we don't have forgot password repository so let's bring it also here final forgot password repository forgot password repository this also done then we will save this so save fp and finally we will re return a response entity dot ok and we will say email sent for verification so on the ui side you can show in the toast that email is sent for the verification and after that the next screen will come here this screen will come which will say enter the otp okay so this part we have completed this uh, sending the email now user has to enter the otp also right so let's develop this part now for this we need to develop another endpoint because again the user will enter an otp and it will send again this otp to us so we will say uh, verify response entity string this time the method will be verify otp now here again we have to take at path very at uh, at post mapping actually 
and we will say verify OTP we will be taking an OTP here and we will also be taking an email here in the path variable the reason for this is uh, you can create a new DTO class or helper class which will have OTP and email and you can just use that as a request body or you can send the OTP and email both okay now we are also sending email again because the user is not logged in so there is no way we can extract the email directly okay so the only way is on the front end side we need to maintain or we need to track the email uh, which is associated with the OTP okay with that in particular user right so that's why we are taking this then path variable then integer OTP and again the path variable string email string email okay now here again we have to check uh, that user exists or not this check will come most of the time because it is highly required now then we what we have to do is we have got OTP and we have got an email right next thing that we need to do is we have to first check whether a user with the given OTP and the given um, means this user which we have fetched here and the given OTP exist in our database or not so our database is this forward password database right uh, sorry for forward password table so we need to check this so we will use forward password repository and we need to construct a method here so let's construct a method custom method we need to build so we will have an optional it will return a forward password uh, entity uh, object basically and we will say find by OTP and user okay it will take integer OTP user user now here we can uh, we can give our custom query okay so that uh, it would be beneficial also so we will be giving our custom query here so select FP from forgot now here the auto suggestion is not coming because we are using the IntelliJ community version if you were be if you were using either Eclipse or the ultimate version of IntelliJ then it the auto suggestion would be coming so just write what I am writing here dot OTP equal to one and FP dot user equal to two so this is the basically J J jpql query that we are writing here we do it is same like uh, sql but we don't have to use the sql table name or columns there we can just use our own uh, J java classes for the representation so this is the query that we require here we will say find otp by user and otp and user comma user and we will say or else throw new runtime exception invalid otp for email for email this email okay also let's extract it to a variable and name it fp now we have got an forgot password object which has the OTP and the user associated with the uh, same so our so one thing we have verified that the OTP which we are having uh, which the user has entered and the OTP which we have stored in the database for that particular user is correct but we have to also check if the expiration time the OTP is not expired so we will say if fp dot uh, get expiration time uh, dot before date dot from instant dot now so fp dot expiration time will give the time that uh, the time to which the OTP is valid and we, we are providing here a 
the current time so instant dot now will give us the current time so we will check that this particular time if it is still valid or not Be before means that test if this date is before the specified date so what it actually means is suppose the fp dot expiration time gives a date with the time to 12 20 pm okay but the user the current time is 12 25 pm so in that case this expiration time comes before the current time right so this whole expression will be true if this whole expression is true then we have to say that otp is expired okay the current time should be less than the actual expiration time i hope you have understood okay so this forgot password repository dot delete first we'll delete it delete fp dot get fp id and then we will return new response entity we will say otp has expired and will pass an https status code as expectation field something like that okay our expectation was that otp is valid but our expectation has failed because otp has expired so maybe you have set up a otp expiration time of 10 minutes but the user is entering the otp after 30 minutes so in that case you have to delete the current record and you have to provide this message now delete we are deleting the record because once the otp is expired in the on the front end side you would you, you would say to user to again so you would like to resend the otp to the user a new otp with the new expression time and since as you have you can see here we have done one to one mapping so in that case there will be an error because only one record can match to one user we cannot have multiple records match to one user right so that can be a issue that's why we have deleted also in case the otp is valid then we will say response entity dot okay and we will just say otp verify so this second part is also done so what we have done in this part we created uh one thus once the user submits the email we are taking the email here and we are verifying it and then we are sending the mail to this email to this otp okay second once the user enters the otp and clicks on verify otp we are getting the otp we are getting the mail of the user and then we are checking the whether the otp which the user has given and which we have in the database is equal or not and second if the otp is expired or not both things once both is done and otp verification is done then the user will be redirected to this page this form where it has to enter the new password now finally the otp verification of the email is done now user can change its password or set up its new password so let's write a method for it so it will be also a post mapping and we will make it as change password change password again will take a email in the here and it will have response entity of again type string okay and then we will say change password handler something like that okay now here we will create a detail class a helper class basically so we will create a helper class we will create a helper class in the utils package which we will name as change password okay and it will be a record why we are making this i will just tell you soon and we will have a string a repeat password okay so this is our helper class so i'm making this a new record because it will be not just helpful for this forget password functionality but it would also be helpful for when we are implementing reset password functionality because in reset password also you will be doing the same you will be having 
a new password field and uh, re-enter the new password okay you can also have a old password field it's up to all up to you okay there is no as such rest restriction so in request body we will have a change password whereas uh, let's put in next line in path variable we will have the string email first thing that we have to check is that the password that the user has entered and the re-entered password both should be equal so we will say if two passwords are not equal so we will use an objects class so this checks whether the two objects values are equal or not equals change password dot password comma change password dot repeat password if both passwords are not equal then we will simply return new or response entity please enter the password again now you might be thinking that this is a this can be done at ui side also but in case in on the ui side sometimes the there can be some issue or due to some issue if it gets skipped the validation gets skipped then there should be a server side validation also okay so always remember don't completely rely on the client side server side checks and balances are also there to be put in place okay so expectation failed again and then finally uh, now since we have already handled the now since we have already handled the case when both are not equal but in case both are equal so we just need to fire a query which will update the password but wait the password which is given to us by the user is in the raw format we need to encode that password because we have uh, used a password encoder a bcrypt password encoder so first we will say a string encoded password equal to we will have a password encoder uh, let's bring the password encoder dependency also private final password encoder if you go back to your uh, previous videos in the security part we have already set up the bean of the password encoder so password encoder dot encode and we will pass change password dot password okay this will encode our password and now we can call the update method now if you go to this uh, user repository we don't have any update method let's create a update method so we will create update method which will be return nothing we just need to update password okay we don't need to check for whole thing so email we will pass and we will pass a password and we will write our own query here query so update user u set u dot i hope you know the meaning of aliases okay so i'm using the alias here equal to and i'm simply writing a sql query for updating the password where u dot email equal to one so this is the first parameter and this is the second parameter so we have to use the second parameter here first parameter here okay now if you just use this method it will not update in fact it will give you an error the error is whenever you write a query or whenever there's a method which updates something which delete something right in that case two annotations you have to use first is add modifying to specify that something is being modified and second is add transactional transactional from jakarta.transaction okay so these are the two annotations you which you need to write if you have to do any operation like update or delete so this is a important thing that you, you are going to you are learning here okay now let's complete this functionality so user repository dot update password just pass an email and just pass encoded password it will update it 
and return response entity dot ok password has been changed okay so that is all so we have defined all the implementations right so for quick uh, summary of this one let's let's see what we have done till now so we have created one first endpoint which is to verify email how we are verifying email the user is sending its email we are verifying whether the user exists with the given email if it exists we are generating an otp for it we are constructing the mail body drafting the mail for it with the otp in the main mail and we are sending the mail saving the otp and expiration time to our database okay and then finally we are responding with that okay there is an email which is sent for verification go to your email and get the otp so in the otp screen your user has to enter the otp now the user has got the otp on its email id so what it will do it will enter the email id and it will send it okay it will submit it so we are getting the otp so and the email of the user again because since the user is not logged in so we need to keep track of the email so first we are verifying the user if it exists if the user exists then the user and the otp associated with that user sh both should be equal okay the otp entered by the entered by the user and the otp which we have corresponding to that particular user both should be equal if both are equal then we are checking if the otp should not be expired now this step can come first you can say but uh, this flow is also correct mm, there is no issue in that okay so in case the otp is expired we are del deleting the records in our database table and we are uh, responding to the user that otp has expired if everything is fine then otp verified once it is verified now it's time for user to change its password or to set up the new password so once it uh, enters the password and submits it then we check that whether the entered password and the re-entered password is both correct or not if both are not correct then we are saying to user to please enter, enter the password again if both are same then simply we are first encoding the password to using bcrypt encoder and then we are updating the password for the corresponding user and we are responding back that password has been changed and after that once this is done it will be redirected to login page and again, again it can then finally log in correct so i hope you have understood the whole flow of it now the only thing remaining is to check whether it's working or not now two things that i will do behind the scene you have to also do this username and password you set up here as i have told username sh here should be a valid proper gmail id that you have already have and as i have said go here to the two step verification complete it if you don't have completed it and then you will get the option of apps app password so you have to enter the app password here and your email id here and second thing is in the email service in the here in the set from you have to enter the same email id that you are entering here in the username these two things you have to do i will also do behind the scenes so that i don't want to expose my email ids so you you can do those things and then we are all set to test whether the things are working or not okay okay so i have already set up my email and passwords now so now it's time to test it okay so let's test let's run the application let's see everything is working fine okay our new table is created perfect let's go to the database so here if we refresh the database here our movies database so okay we have got a forgot password also so we see here currently no records are there and we have a sudarshan at gmail.com 
okay so this is a this was not a valid email id here let's make a email id which is valid so here for one of the user that you are created uh, that you have already created or you can create another user but this time give the email id which is actually correct so that it you actually receive the proper uh, you, you can actually receive the otp on a correct email id okay okay so i have given a proper email id here which is correct for me so the mail will be sent to this email id okay the otp okay and from which email id it will be sent so i have already i can can't show that because password and password can be exposed there so sorry for that you can give your own valid gmail id as i have already told you so this is my one this email id is associated uh, this email id i have just associated just like that for the testing purpose so it's all right now let's go here and let's write code with sudarshan at gmail.com and with the current one two three four five which is a password let's test if it is working so if i click here you can see currently it's working it is giving me access token and refresh token right but now suppose i forgot the password one two three four five so what will happen so that i have to do is i have to follow a few steps now those few steps i have defined here first thing is to go to verify mail and i have to send a mail here so i will say verify mail slash code with so the Russian at gmail.com and I will make body to none. So no body is expected, only this is expected. So forgot. Okay. One more thing I just forgot. I just remembered now. Go to your security configuration and here put a comma and write forgot password slash star star. Okay. Now the reason for this is okay this base url we have put so let me just copy and paste again so that i'm sure that it is perfect okay so i have i'm not securing this endpoint because when user is not logged in why then it cannot have you cannot expect to have access token with it right so it makes sense to allow this url right so let's return the application again so this is the important thing now our application has started perfectly okay now let's go here and with the existing password i am able to generate the access token okay perfect but since suppose i have forgot i want to change my password so i am clicking on for forgot password let's follow the flow so verify mail slash you need to pass a email so currently i am on this screen so, right so I send the email. Now it will take some time. Okay, it is saying email sent for verification. So let's see if email is actually sent. Okay, now I am changing it to verify OTP. That is the second endpoint which will verify my OTP, right? And let's send again. So if I send again, it is saying OTP verified. Perfect. Now, third one is to change the password. And I have to pass an email. And in request body the change password thing right so let's do it third is to change password pass email then in body you have to pass password the so the new password i will pass is suppose 1000 okay or 10,000. 1000 10,001 10, yeah that's perfect and here i have to pass a uh, repeat password 10,001 okay. right so this is how we have to pass it now if i i let me verify if it is correct change password slash email now uh, let's make, copy paste here okay perfect so now if i do it password has been changed now to verify whether password has been changed go to this login user api now it one two three four five was the previous password right now if i try to log in it with it it says forbidden so it's not logging it so let me use new password 10001 
Now if I try with it, so boom, it's working, right? Now for OTP verification, whether the OTP will be expired or not. So here I have for the reason only I have set up the uh, OTP for 70 seconds. Let me reduce it to 30 seconds so that or maybe 20 seconds. Okay, let's run the system again. This time let's try if it works or not. So currently again since I've restarted this the server if i go and log in again i will get the access token and refresh token again but now here i have to change this to verify mail okay so in verify mail i'm uh, let's put it to none and i will say send oh okay so it's saying 403 error just because this record has to be removed or oh, just a minute let me delete the row because because of one to one mapping you cannot have multiple records for one user so let's go again here and send again okay email sent for verification and i will change it to verify otp now let's wait for some 20 seconds and then we will send it okay so if i send now it is saying otp has expired now if i go to database you can see here it has deleted the record right so it's uh, the edge case is also working right so we have implemented the forget password functionality and you now also know how to send the mail you also know how to uh, reset the password the uh, how to deal with forget password functionality how to make all these changes right how to verify email with e email using otp right there are various verification methods to do but we have used this one for the convenience also and it is perfectly fine right uh, the second functionality is the reset password okay now for the reset password i would like you to do uh, you all to do this one okay as an assignment or as an exercise you you can do on your on your own now the only difference is that you don't have to verify anything okay you just have to log in into the system and after logging into the system you have to this is is the only end point that is useful here so change password you will be requiring because it has password and re repeat password so it and email of course you have so uh, as you are already logged in so you can extract the email from the token and you can update your password right so the it, the reset password is all same but only thing is that one thing i want you to make ensure that reset password endpoint has to be secured don't make it unsecure okay and when i say secure then if when you are uh, when the reset password endpoint when you are submitting the data on the reset password then ensure that you are including the access token in the header of the request okay so this is for you to now implement it because it's super easy to do now after learning all these things i hope that is super easy now for you so i leave the reset password to you anything that you don't understand or anything that you need more you can put in the comments i'll try to respond one or two more videos and this series will be complete soon so i hope you have understood the concept and the implemented functionality of the forgot password if you have understood it and like the content please press on the like button subscribe to the channel if you are new here i'll see you in the next one till then bye bye